Good Go afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is James with Trace Gains, and uh, welcome to the Systems Integration for Supply Chain Visibility. Um, as you see on the screen, some helpful tips are to experience this in theater mode. That is typically the best way so that you can see the video as well as ask questions. And this is a session that we want uh, and would love a lot of Q&A because we have some exciting guests who have a lot of experience with integrating systems, building out APIs, and connecting different technologies. Um, again, if you need assistance for uh, support, exit out of theater mode in the top right, there's a support uh, button that you can click. Um, and again, don't forget to take the poll on the right side or, uh, you know, again, ask questions in the chat box. We're really excited to, to kind of get things going for you guys. So, um, you know, today we have a, a few attendees, one, a couple from Trace Games. Uh, again, my name is James Yarbrough. I'm the a, a senior account executive here, been here for about seven years. But we also have with us uh, Chad Wiener, who's a systems architect over at Alithia, who is a, a, a technology company who helps companies integrate their systems, systems like CRM, or business intelligence, or even ERP. And Chad's gonna share with us a little bit about how they're doing things, some of the things that he's seen in the industry, and so on. Next, we have George Muller. George is the VP of uh, Information Services and the CIO over at a company called CH Gunther. And CH Gunther has been with Trace Gains uh, for quite a while now, I think since 2014, and they run our supplier management and supplier compliance modules. And George is gonna share a little bit about how C.H. Gunther does things, some of the, the uh, things he's seen in his many years of experience uh, in the information services and IT world. And it's exciting to hear a little bit about what they're doing. Next, we have Mike Kirsch. Um, and Mike is, is the corporate director of QA over at Freshmark. And Mike uh, has implemented a few of our modules. I think most notably is our quality management tool that they're running over at Freshmark. And he's gonna share some, uh, some, some information and you know, ideas, thoughts around what they've done. And then lastly, we have Bruce Desson, who is a systems architect here at Trace Gains. And Bruce is, is with us today because Bruce, Bruce is basically uh, quarterback the entire API journey of Trace Gains throughout the years as our, our customers come to us and wanna integrate their systems uh, with Trace Gains so that they can build better processes. So with that, we're going to start with, uh, with Chad. He's got a few minutes, just again, overview of what his company does, some of the benefits and, and things he's seen over the years. We're going to then move to George and then Mike. And then after Mike, we want to really get into the roundtable discussion and get into some Q&A and provide value for everybody who's on the call today. So with that, I'll pass it over to you, Chad. Awesome. Thank you, James. Hi everyone, my name is Chad Weiner and I am a solution architect at Alithia. We are a Microsoft Gold partner. We help these uh, digitally transform through Microsoft's business applications. Those are CRM, customer engagement, as well as Microsoft's ERP systems. But as we're gonna talk about today, integration is routine in every project that we do. Um, so whether it's your own systems or a great system like Trace Gains, getting that data into your applications is crucial no matter what they are. Um, about a we are a, uh, a top 1% partner. Uh, we have a digital team that does portals and e-commerce, um, as well as we do systems integration, which we're gonna talk about. Uh, next slide, please. If you aren't familiar briefly with the Dynamics 365 platform, um, for those of you that may already use Office 365 or have an Office 365 investment, those are things like Outlook, emails, appointments. We all use those most every day within our, our productivity flow. We all may collaborate on Teams or Zoom. Uh, when we talk about CRM, it's not just a role anymore. That's going to be that first square CE. We think of it as customer engagement. So whether it's sales and leads and opportunities, or it's marketing, doing drip journeys, or following your customers or prospects on the website, whether it's customer service and handling all those issues and complaints that your customers may have about damaged products, uh, or maybe customers are chatting with the website, getting all those in and maybe a call center environment. And then field service, if we're dispatching people out, if we have plant maintenance that we need to manage. Um, all of those really encompass the customer, the customer engagement suite. 
And when you look to the right, ERP, Microsoft has their own ERP. So you may have a different ERP, but it's important for systems to integrate. And so at the bottom, that common data service, Microsoft is built on a, on a platform that easily allows integrations. And we're gonna explore that a little bit more um, as we talk about trace gains. As you look on the right, you have Power BI, which is the dashboarding and reporting tool where we can bring not only mixed data, but also trace gains data in and share those reports out with the business. And then if we're trying to infuse machine learning into our applications, we can do that via Cortana Intelligence Suite or Microsoft's Azure IoT. So excited to be talking about not only trace gains and system integrations, but hopefully Microsoft platform as well. Uh, and we look forward to answering your questions. Back to you, James. Thank you. Good stuff, Chad. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's, it's fun to, to learn a little bit about what you guys do. And uh, we're excited to, to start to hopefully work with you guys on some of our mutual customers and so on. Next, I want to pass it over to George Muller. Again, he's the um, CIO over at CH Gunther and Son. And George has a, a few slides here to share with everybody about their journey with regard to trace gains and integration and so on. George? Thank you, James, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's had a good two and a half days and have uh, had the opportunity to soak up lots of information uh, about uh, trace gains and other topics of interest. Again, my name's George Muller. I'm the Vice President and Chief Information Officer for a company headquartered in San Antonio, Texas, C.H. Ginther and Son. C.H. Ginther and Son has been in business since 1851. Today, we operate our bakeries in five uh, different countries, 24 bakeries in total. And C.H. Gunther & Son makes everything from artisan bread, cookies, cheesecakes, brownies, and many, many other really, really good products. Certainly my goal in ter terms of talking with all of you today is hopefully to plant a seed perhaps give you an idea, something that you can take back to your organization. Our footprint with Trace Gains today is really surrounded around two modules, supplier compliance, which processes certificates of analysis, and supplier management, which is a repository for both supplier documents as well as product documents. You know, when we talk about systems integration, or application programming interfaces. I think of, 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 of those as being really almost the Achilles heel on several you know, projects that I've been involved with. When applications are integrated, like an ERP systems, where, where you've got accounts payable and accounts receivable that's integrated with a general ledger, uh, things usually go pretty smooth. But where you've got something like an ERP system, like in our case, SAP, or trace gains, then uh, many, many times you get into a finger pointing issue where, well, we're sending you the data, well, we're not receiving it. Well, we're receiving it, but you're not sending us the right data. And our integration with Trace Games was uh, seamless. Uh, it, was, it was very easy. And, and I'd really like to, the, the screen that, that you see now is, is really what I would consider to be the four-legged stool that talks about the CH Gunther and Trace Games journey started in 2014, surrounded around uh, uh, certificates of analysis. Some, I, I know many of you are, are familiar with COAs. And when we started out, we didn't even think about integrating with our ERP system. And shortly after that, we said, you know, if we have this integrated with SAP, using the trace gains open architecture, uh, we're gonna drive a lot of efficiencies and a lot of value. And so we did that within a couple of months after our, our go live. Um, shortly after that, in 2015, uh, we went with document management. And as I mentioned earlier, we have both product and supplier information that's housed in trace gains. Supplier information like audit information, insurance, HACCP, and, and various other certifications. Uh, product information, specifications, allergens, safety data sheets, and many other documents, okay? Third is corrective action reports. Uh, the, the beauty of a corrective action report is that right from within the trace gains application, 
we can send out to suppliers, not just one supplier, but multiple, multiple suppliers at one time, action that they need to take in order to be compliant with our specifications. And then this year in 2020, what I would consider to be the icing on the cake in the supplier management module, we turned on supplier scorecards. And all of the supplier scorecard information, uh, which if we go to the next screen, uh, happens behind the scene. And, and so uh, these different components, and there's other components to choose from, are given different values, different points, but we don't enter those points on each transaction or with each supplier. The, the system is doing that for us. And there's really only one that we have to annual enter manually, and that's the Global Foods Service Certification, where we give a supplier an additional five points uh, uh, if they have that certification, which then all uh, accumulates in the background and gets displayed. So with this and with this integration, we have complete visibility all the way from QA purchasing to the plant floor and one version of the truth. And I think that's the, the realization that we've experienced using this technology. Uh, look forward to your questions. And with that, James, I think I'll throw it back to you. Thanks, George. Good stuff. Really appreciate you going through that with us. And, and I know that you've been a great partner with us for a while. I do want to make one housekeeping note. If you did have to go out of the Pathable site and use the Zoom application, um, just remember that you can keep that site open and that is where you would ask the questions into the chat box. So I know you might have to toggle between two technology applications going into internet and Zoom, but if you wouldn't mind, if you have questions, go back to that site and uh, just type in your questions into the chat box. So next we're gonna bring in Mike Kirsch uh, over at Freshmark to talk a little bit about, you know, again, his journey, uh, a little bit about Freshmark and himself and, and, and we'll get into the Q&A and have, hopefully have some really good roundtable discussion afterwards. Mike? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Kirsch, uh, obviously from Freshmark. Uh, we are a further process uh, meats facility, so we're making bacon, hams, pepperoni, hot dogs. We have four facilities, basically in Northeast Ohio uh, is where we're located at. And as George talked about supplier, supplier management and what he's doing with integration, I'm just gonna touch on uh, QM, quality management module, and what we're doing with integration because it's really helped us pull the data that we're collecting within trace gains and put it into a report format that's real time and very transparent. And basically we've got two real two things right now is we've tied it to our ERP system, which allows us to generate records directly from our ERP system into our QM module. And then that, and it pushes it right up and creates that record, which then we can verify. And I'll show you an example of that. In addition to that, we actually take the data then from trace gains and push it into Power BI, kind of like Chad had pointed out that they can recommend doing that we take the data right from trace gains and generate a Power BI report real time. It's refreshing every 10 minutes is what we have our report set on. So as the data is put into trace gains, the you hit the save button, the records created, the data is automatic, automatically pushed over. Could you go ahead and flip the slide, please? So this is just a brief example of a QM record that you would see inside of Trace Games. What's unique and nice about this is most of the records, I have a QA tech that's using an iPad down on the floor, entering this data in. This data is actually automatically entered in from our ERP system. So we actually have a touch screen on the floor. The individual is doing uh, entering the smokehouse number, the pump number, putting the green weight in, and the pump weight, everything automatically calculated for him on that screen as he hit enter. That's uploaded into our ERP systems. We're using uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Um, and then AX pushes that information directly over into trace gains, and this record is generated. So there's no individual actually generating this record within the trace gains. 
what happens then, then our HACCP individual is able to go in and verify this information. So it can go directly into the verification process from there. Go ahead and flip the next slide, please. And this is just an example of a Power BI report that we have here. Um, so obviously we are doing leaker checks on the floor, the QA technician is gathering that data, entering the information into an iPad through the, the QM module of a form we've created. And then as soon as again, they hit the save button, this information is pushed over to Power BI in real time. And you can look up there on the, the right hand corner we have date filters and line filters. So if I want to look over for the last month, I just put in, I've got in from 82 to 829, and it's that information. If I want to go back and look from the first of the year, I put in January 1st up to the present time, or I can do it month by month. There's a lot of features that you're able to do with Power BI from that standpoint at that point. Okay, looking forward to any more questions you guys got, and I'll push it back over to James, thanks. Good stuff, Mike. Really appreciate that. Um, just to kind of get the conversation flowing, I do see that there are uh, a few questions coming in, so we will get to those. But just to kind of get things going, uh, I think it's important to look at the journey that we've made here at Trace Gains with regard to our API in working with companies like Freshmark and like CH Gunther, uh, even other partners, but also obviously a lot of our customers. And I think the best way to start with that is go to you, Bruce, and just talk a little bit about your approach when it came to working on the API, uh, things you've seen, your experience, and so on and so forth. Thanks, James. Um, engineering at Trace Gains, when we first thought about building out our APIs, we were really trying to accomplish four major goals. Uh, ease of use, security, uh, a long service life, and uh, self-describe, self-description, or self-describing, or well-documented services. So, with respect to trace gains, we we do believe we've accomplished all four. The the uh, our endpoints are very easy to use in a sense that methods are similar from endpoint to endpoint to endpoint. Um, we we may we selected the SOAP protocol because we felt that it was the most secure protocol since it supports web service security layer. It's native to that specific protocol. Uh, we built out a documentation system. We let the services self-describe themselves, but then we went ahead and built on top of that our own documentation layer in more of a friendly manner. And then of course, long service life. When, you, when customers you know, spend time and money and energy integrating with trace gains, each time we upgrade trace gains, we don't want them to have to actually go upgrade their integration points with a brand new API. So the ape, so the does our design, if you will, was designed to cross multiple versions of trace gains as it gets upgraded from version seven to version eight to version nine and so on. We want that API, that integration work that you've done to have a really, really long service and stable service life. Good stuff, Bruce. Good stuff. I think, um, you know, a couple questions came in and they're uh, somewhat similar. Those questions are, you know, is there a list of platforms that TG is compatible with? Do you have a list of integration compatible ERPs? Um, and can it trace gains interface with platforms such as Salesforce? I think you touched on that a little bit, Bruce, but I think if you want to expand on that a little bit, that'd be helpful. And then maybe yeah. George, you could jump in and talk just about what it was like working with Bruce being that you have a certain uh, system and then Mike working with the team here at Trace Games, being that you have a different system and a different goal for your integration. Yeah, let me say first, our, the Trace Games APIs are standards-based and the significance of standards-based APIs is they're not, they don't have to be compatible with any specific system. They're compatible with any standards-based system. So we can, so, so any, any system that supports SOAP 1.1 and 1.2 in our case can access trace gains. And that is hundreds, if not thousands of systems or custom code or uh, uh, tool sets that you provision in AWS and Azure and all these other cloud systems. Uh, we just support the standards. Good stuff, good stuff. George, 
Uh, talk to me a little bit about, you know, when you first approached trace gains and you said, well, hey, we started off, we didn't, you know, think about integrating trace gains, we were going to use it as a standalone product, which, you know, we have plenty of customers on this call who, who do use it as a standalone product. And talk about kind of your journey there as far as starting to work with Bruce. And then why, why should somebody care about integrating their ERP with trace gains for modules like supplier management or supplier compliance? No, absolutely, James. Um, you know, we, we started, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, not even thinking about integration. And, and then we realized, you know, when you looked at all of the different steps involved from when we received a certificate of analysis in from one of our suppliers, you know, the, the focal point or the, 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 the apex of this is really on the plant floor when the employee is unloading a truck and he's scrambling to try to find uh, you know a, a coa and is the coa good has it arrived and and trying to match it up with a a, a master spec sheet uh that was just a, a process that was prone to human error and and now with the interface that uh, and and the api that bruce described uh, which, uh, you know, has only gotten better in the last six years since we went, went live. Um, you know, now when the person on the plant floor is unloading that truck and he's putting in that receiving document, right then and there, an error message or a warning will pop up, you know, accepted, rejected, you know, and and again, when you're in the, the, the food manufacturing business, you want to know right away. In fact, oftentimes, that COA now is coming in electronically to one of our mailboxes that then gets interfaced you know, to the master in, at Trace Gains. Sometimes we'll know that something is out of spec before the supplier's truck even leaves his dock. So we've got transportation you know, across multiple functions to catch, to catch something as early as possible and, and then get it rectified so that we can then get the right product and, and then continue to serve our customer. Great, great. Mike, do you want to maybe chime in? Uh, we did have a question come in that potentially has to do with, with some of the, uh, the, the things that you might have want to, you might use, excuse me. Uh, do you have scales linked to trace gains for net weights? Um, you know, I could answer that first of all, Clayton. Uh, currently, we don't connect to machines for things like PLCs. Um, one of the reasons that I've been told, and, and I am not, uh, uh, you know, an expert on this, but is the reality that PLC type connecting to machines can oftentimes cost companies a lot of money. You have to hire employees to manage and maintain those PLC type connections and things of that nature. But I think that flows nicely into, into how you might be able to talk a little bit, Mike, about you guys are running QM, you guys are logging data, capturing checks, um, and so on and so forth, and then connecting that to your Microsoft BI system that you currently use. You know, what was that journey a little bit like? How did you decide what data you wanted to bring in and so on? Sure. Well, obviously, we spent probably the first six months just getting QM up and running and getting all our forms the way we wanted them and working with the technicians on collecting the data. Well, then obviously you get to the realization that you have all this data that you need to do something with it, whether it be for reporting to a customer or analyzing this data. And we started working with my IT department and Power BI was something that came with our, our ERP system, Microsoft AX and said this would be a good tool to have in conjunction with, obviously that's when we reached out to Trace Gaines and say, okay, how do we get these two to marry up? And then the whole API conversation started and we got for the QM. And one thing we learned real quick is we generate a lot of monthly reports for our customers. And it's all from this data that we're collecting on a hourly, daily, monthly basis. And we were actually able to build these reports basically into some graphs that we can actually go in, put the, the month in of data, it 
plots out the information, you save it as a PDF, and you can email it directly to the customer. Whereas before we were exporting to Excel or putting in an Excel, manipulating the data. Here with the, the combination of having the data and trace gains and having the Power BI ability to filter it the way we needed to filter it for the customer, it made it, a, it made it an easy transition for us. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, next, I wanna go over to Chad and just kind of talk a little bit, Chad. I mean, we've, we've talked a little bit here about, you know, we've connected with CH Gunther and their ERP system to help with things around lot by lot, you know, data automating processes, one source of the truth. We talked a little bit about Microsoft BI and what Freshmark is using as they capture data using our quality management module. Um, but talk a little bit, Chad, maybe about other opportunities that companies might have to integrate outside of just you know, a standard ERP or, or a Microsoft BI type tool. Where may there be some other opportunities for companies to integrate and what are some things that they should think about high level you know, before they jump in as far as what, what's important, what's not important? Yeah, absolutely. And those are great questions. With Mike, just know that for those that have made some investment in Microsoft with Office 365, Power BI is a really natural power, uh, you know, I'm a, 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 excuse me, I'm a visualization aid where it's not only ERP or CRM data, but it can be all data stored. So I think just leveraging a reporting tool to make those reports service like Mike's team did where no one's having to generate a report. We have those live dashboards that we can easily visualize or share with an external stakeholder. Crucial and I think just getting your data in one place is big. When you talk about what's important to think about when you're integrating is do you need to act upon this data? A lot of times I'm from the CRM world, right? Orders, invoices, people want that data inside of CRM for sales reps to view, for customer service reps to view when they're on the phone quickly with a person. So do you need to bring that data into the system to actually open the record, drill into the record, see the data? Or can we embed a PI report or embed some sort of read-only view just to give quick access from an external system where they'd have to swivel chair around or open up a new tab? So you don't always have to integrate the data. Sometimes it's about integrating the user experience and that can span across multiple applications, right? It's just more about clicks and making it get to the data where they need to be quicker. Um, and so hopefully you're looking at all of your tools in that fashion and, and you're understanding where some of the interactions come. When we talk about other integration points, your website, uh, you have a presence there on the web e-commerce, whether it's people getting in touch about your products or prospects and leads, getting those into the system and just maybe they put in a zip code. We can automatically route that to the right salesperson based on a territory. Or if it's product related information that goes to the product team and not the legal team. So just getting these teams involved and being able to automate those types of processes we've seen are crucial. And I would just say with this COVID era of uh, being able to communicate with your customers and then going online and self-servicing, whether it's a call center, whether it's a chat on your website, being able to communicate with your customers and the they want to communicate with you um, is crucial. And when they reach out, that agent's going to have to reach out to several systems, right? They're going to look at that customer in your CRM system or Excel spreadsheets, and they're going to pull up some financial or sale, uh, data in their ERP. So making that easier on your agents, on your internal or stakeholders uh, is crucial. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I did see a question come in uh, from Deborah, and I want to ask that right now. And um, you know, maybe this might be a good question to start with you, Bruce. It says, we're implementing a new PLM system and have the following questions. Do you have any clients who are using Microsoft SharePoint exclusively for all trace gains doc storage? If so, how does that integration work? Is it difficult to configure? Uh, that one's a tough one for me to answer. I don't know of any Trace Gains customer that is using SharePoint as a document storage solution. They use Trace Gains as their document storage solution. So maybe um, we could talk a little bit there, Bruce, about, you know, you know, I can sit here and say, well, yeah, you should store your documentation in Trace Gains. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to the relevant stuff that we're doing, 
maybe how you've seen some of the customers manage that because you know while we know companies do store active archived expired documentation in trace gains they also want to be able to maybe back that up internally potentially or have those records saved on a local driver is that something you've had experience with can you elaborate on that any Yes, we, we have seen customers uh, make use of our APIs to download documents and vice versa, also upload documents, uh, literally on routine schedules. Uh, I, it would be easy to speculate, yeah, they're doing exactly that. Maybe they need to, they want to pull those documents down that Trace Gains is collecting for them automatically. They want to pull those down to a local repository or local storage or off-site storage somewhere. Uh, you can use the API to do that, and we do have customers that are doing, based on their traffic in the API, it appears that that's what they're doing. But okay. yes, they, they can use our APIs directly to uh, download those docs or upload those documents to trace gains. So they can manage their docs through the API. Perfect. And I would add on for those that are using SharePoint, the Microsoft, the Power Platform, uh, I'm glad to hear Bruce confirm that you can access documents from the trace gain I, we certainly have tools on that platform that are really low code, no code, drag and drop. Of course, if you've got a developer on staff that can talk with Bruce, there's a lot you can do. But for someone with a power user, something like Power Automate um, will be able to interface with something like SharePoint as well as with the trace gains uh, you know, for storing those uh, historical documents or archiving things of that nature. Very cool, very cool. So we had uh, uh, another question come in from uh, Mariana, and it just says, do you have experience in integrating the supplier compliance and management modules with traceability softwares? Um, I'm not sure of any off the top of my head, Mariana, um, but at the end of the day, as Bruce explained when we kind of kicked off the round table, and Bruce, maybe you can jump in on this, um, the idea is to make the platform accessible to all types of systems that can access the data. Uh, anything else you'd like to point out on that, Bruce? Um, I can just, I'll just say this. Uh, we do get this, these this type of question quite a bit. You know, what kind of systems have we integrated with? And that's very, that is difficult for us to answer simply because the API is standards based. So we don't actually know generally unless the information is offered up to us. We don't know what system is on the other end asking trace gains for data or sending data to trace gains. The only time I ever know that is if, uh, you know, I get very specific type support questions where, you know, they're giving me scenarios like, hey, we're using, you know, Agile PLM to do such and such, or we're using ROS or something like that. Um, but generally speaking, I don't know what's on the other end because we're talking in a standard a standardized way uh, we don't need to know anything about them and they don't need to know anything about us. So, so my apologies, it's actually hard to answer, but I, hopefully that explains why I answered it that way. Sure. And, and I'll say this because I've, you know, talking to a lot of people over the years, obviously our name's Trace Gains. So many, many people kind of think, you know, how do I just have one system to end to end traceable? And the reality is uh, that's why we're on the call today, right? Because there's sure. not really one system that kind of says, well, it's end to end for everything and all the, whether it's documents, a lot of information on C of A's, where it's shipped to from customers, um, what went into the product and so on and so forth. Of course, trace games can help with a lot of that data, um, but we're not managing inventory like a traditional ERP system. So, you know, traceability is a, really a journey for companies to go on. And one of the big points of that journey, I think, is you know, talking about integrating systems. So with that, I want to pitch it over to you, George, and just talk a little bit about your experience with, with integrating, not just on the trace games front, but you've been doing this for, for quite a while. And, you know, we have some companies on here that are massive companies, you know, maybe multi-billion type companies, but we also have plenty of customers at trace games who are nowhere near that size as far as volume and revenue but they probably could still find some benefits with integrating some systems. So George, maybe could you, could you expand on that a little bit? And then Mike, I'd love to get your thoughts as well, being that you're less from the IT side, uh, more on the QA side. So, so George? Well, I, I think again, it goes back, James, to um, 
you know, there's, there's always that debate on whether you go with an integrated solution or, or you, if you go with best of breed. And I, I think with Trace Gains, you've got both. You've got an integrated solution that's using some open architecture, as Bruce has described, to bring data, you know, from uh, various other disparate systems back into a single repository. And I, I think, you know, if, if you don't have the integration, then you've got multiple versions of the truth and you've got users that are putting in like data in multiple systems and, and you're going to get uh, differences and, and then you're going to have reconciliation opportunities. And so, you know, you, you want everything to tie together. You want it to be seamless. You only want to put the information in one time, right? And you don't want to put it in three or four times by three or four different departments because then somebody's going to put it in differently. But if you put it in one time and it's correct the first time, and then it's seamlessly flows to the other places where it needs to go, then I think you're way ahead of the game. Good stuff. Good stuff. So Mike, yeah, just a little bit about, you know, obviously we have George here and is very technical. Chad's more technical and even Bruce is, is a bit more technical than maybe you or I, you being somebody who actually manages the quality team, your job isn't to necessarily integrate systems, right? But what was that journey like? A little, just talk a little bit about, you know, you guys, how did you work with your team internally? You know, you're a quality person. You want to make sure this stuff is being captured for helping with audits, scorecarding vendors, or scorecarding internal processes. What was that like working internally? Because many of our attendees, you know, these aren't IT people, right? These aren't people who know how to write the calls to the API to connect the systems, right? They have to go back to their teams and explain why it would be a benefit for them to integrate Tracing. So what, what are some of your thoughts on that, Mike? So when we started looking at you know, getting this data out of QM so we can, the whole goal was to make the data relevant, okay? So we're collecting this data. We needed to find a make, way to make it relevant, make it a way to give it to our production folks, to our QA folks to say, this is really what's happening, to really paint that picture. So we were, we just really started out, how is it gonna make it relevant? So at that point, you know, he's just working with our IT department to say, hey, this is what I need done. And I literally just created a Word document that said, this is the form I'm filling out. These are the attributes I need to capture. This is, I need to see it by date. I need to see it by line. And then let them take and do the work on their end. Honestly, I could sit here and say, I have no idea how they did it. Other than they come back and give me this nice Power BI report and say, is this what you want? I said, no, I really wanted this. You know, I wanted my upper control limit to look like this, my lower control limit like this. They said, okay, they go back, they work on it. And how they do it on that end, I can't sit here and tell you, but it came out and it looks now what I wanted. And that's basically what we do. If someone comes to me and says, I want to see this Power BI report, we basically just have a Word document that says, okay, this is a form the data is coming from, these are the attributes I need to, to chart or get this information from, and this is how I want to look at it. They give it to our IT department and then they go ahead and work with the, the Power BI individual in IT to, uh, to generate the information. So that was really how we went about it is, what did we need to make relevant? And then what did we need to provide to our customers to make our jobs more efficient? Because that was another thing we were trying to get accomplished is, we don't want to make work harder. We're trying to make it more efficient. We're all going through these same things of having less people in time. We have to make our jobs more efficient. And that was the other task we were trying to get accomplished was how can we make these QA managers and these QA supervisors jobs more efficient? Very good. James, Sorry, if, I could, yeah, Go James if I could jump in here, I mean, you know, I'm sure that a lot of the uh, organizations in the audience today uh, and, and Mike, Mike touched on this. It's, you know, there's a lot of emphasis being on, uh, being put on, uh, lean, lean manufacturing, right? Six Sigma, um, you know, eliminating the waste. And, and, and again, I think that's where the integration comes into play. If, if you can have the systems, you know, integrated and talking to each other, then you're going to eliminate, you know, some, some of that waste. But, uh, you know, I was, I was happy to, 
hear Mike, you know, from a QA perspective, talk about how he turns it over to IT and then the, the, the magic just happens. And, 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 and that's, that's what we've been trying to do in IT for years and years. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exciting to hear. And I think it's something important. Now, you know, I've had this discussion with, with folks over the years and, and um, you know, Bruce, maybe you could chime in on this just in what you've seen work best. Um, but the idea is, okay, do I, when I, when I, when I know I want to integrate trace gains and I go to license the software and I know kind of some of the things I want to integrate with, what's the best approach? Is it implement, figure out where there are gaps and then, and then integrate after the fact, or is it maybe spending a little bit of time up front in doing diligence and looking at a roadmap for integration? Um. I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think one thing that customers can do first, uh, at least with respect to trace gains, is contact our CSM. CSM will put them directly in touch with engineering at trace gains, literally directly with engineering. Could be someone like me, but someone else on the, or someone else on the team. And then we can just talk at a really high level about those things that you believe, at least based on what you know now, that you wanna accomplish. And then we can go through those processes with you uh, to see if, you know, what needs to happen on the trace gain side, if anything, uh, what needs to happen on configuration and your current trace gain systems, if anything, uh, just so you can kind of get some of those things out of the way. Uh, and I, in my, in my experience so far, those, with those types of discussions, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're literally just very, very large Q and A type sessions. Right. And those are, those are crazy, crazy beneficial if you're kind of going into this blind and you're not quite sure what you really want to do, just start that discussion with engineering and your CSM and uh, the path just somewhat to, to a large degree kind of unfolds right in front of you. Very good. Very good. Say so we're coming up against the top of the hour here. And I think we've had some good discussions about if you're a current customer, work with your CSM to yeah. have, start a conversation. Uh, with the fact that you need to go into this stuff with eyes wide open and really have a goals that you want to set to accomplish when it comes to integrating systems. And then the, the fact that, you know, you should really take a step back and look at where are opportunities to, again, have one source of the truth and things of that nature. So with that, I just want to give uh, everybody on the call just a couple uh, last minute things to say. Uh, takeaways that they think anybody in the audience really might find beneficial. Chad, I'll go to you first, then I'll move to, to uh, George, then to Mike and Bruce, we'll finish it off with you. Yeah, thank you, James, and thank you for having me. I'll just say, don't be afraid. Uh, these integrations can be very, uh, as Mike mentioned, all IT, teams, all IT departments look differently. Some are capable, some need to reach out to partners for help and education. But it's a simple Word document of what are my needs, and these teams can quickly integrate or, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a produce, uh, I'm, a, I'm a reports that will be service that will drive value and ROI to your business. So please don't be afraid to reach out to Trace Gains for integration examples and expertise. They're here to help you. Good stuff. Good stuff. George, any last uh, things you want to talk about, the partnership and so on in your journey? Absolutely. I think, you know, again, I would encourage everybody to think big, think bold. Um, and, you know, and yes. occasionally, occasionally stuff happens. Occasionally stuff, you know, when you want it to turn to the right, it goes to the left. And, you know, we've, I guess what I would share with the audience, James, is, you know, in the six year relationship that we've had, there's been one or two times when things don't go quite the way everybody had thought they were going to go. And I guess the thing that's, uh, that's very uh, 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 pleasant for me is just, uh, the, again, the relationship and the partnership with Trace Gains. Um, and it's, it's truly not, you know, customer, vendor, it's, it's a partnership and, 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 and owning up and, and working together uh, to find a, a solution uh, versus you know, where I've had, you know, throughout my career, I've had vendors come back and, 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 you know, you think they're a strategic business partner and they tell you, well, but you know, in your contract, it says that we don't, you know, have to do that. Well, well wait a second. Let, let's not talk about the contract. Let's talk about a solution here, you know, that's, that's beneficial to both of us.
So I, I think that's a, a breath of fresh air that, that your audience really should, uh, should, should take advantage of. Great, great. Mike, thanks, thanks for having me. Absolutely, George. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Uh, James, is, it was pretty seamless. I mean, once we decided we wanted to do the integration, working with Trace Games was, was fairly seamless. They gave us the resources. We were able to use those resources and get it done. The second thing I would say is just kind of look at what you've got for reporting now, how hard and how difficult it is, and you be able to see, you'll be able to collect this data within uh, Trace Games and report it through some, some means, whether it's Power BI or some other your ERP system. It, it works fairly seamlessly from our standpoint. Thanks, James. Great. Thanks again, Mike, as well. Bruce, any last uh, words of wisdom or tips? Um, as far as anybody out there thinking, maybe we want to integrate our software with Trace Games or our different systems. Uh, sure. I would just reiterate, start that conversation with your CSM. Just understand that Trace Gains is here to help. I mean, we really are to help you here to help you succeed. Mm -hmm. um, engineering will do what we can <laughs> to help you get there. As daunting as it may, see at it may seem at times, it's not. Uh, I think AJ reported for those folks that saw his uh, roadmap earlier today, well over 100 folk, uh, customers have already integrated with us and more are lined up to do it now. So get in line and we're here to help. Just remember that. Good stuff. Well, hey, I couldn't thank you more, Bruce, Chad, Mike, and George. Thank you so much for a great round table. Please, if you wanna get in touch with these folks, learn a little bit about their experience, learn a little more about Alithia, learn a little bit more about the engineering team. Here's their, their contact information so you can get in touch with them and, and talk about the potential that you might have as far as integrating trace gains, the benefits of integrating systems, and so on. So with that, I want to thank everyone for their time. Um, have a great rest of your day, and thank you very much for, for joining TGCon Live 2020. Thanks, James. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. <laughs>